Thank you so much. Um, welcome everybody to session two of the Spotlight on Spotlight Community Summit. Um, I wanna thank, um, thank everybody who was able to attend last time. We might have some new attendees this time. Thank you for coming. Um, I also want to give a shout out to my co-facilitator, Vanessa from Harvard. Uh, Vanessa Venti, and also um, give, uh, give a shout out, a thank you to Phil Robinson from Cornell and Alan Lungard from Stanford, who are co-note-taking for this session today. Um, I also, for any new uh, first-time attendees, and as a gentle reminder, you will see at the top of the session two document, um, a little bit of a recap of the Digital Library Federation um, Code of Conduct uh, uh, particulars, which we which we are ascribing to for this summit. Um, as it says there, we fully support their guidelines for respectful and inclusive participation and ask that we all abide by these standards during our time together. And if you all do have any concerns, um, thank you to the person who spoke up about turning their camera off. I was remiss in not asking people about that and we'll, we'll make sure that, um, that I definitely do that next time. So thank you for that reminder because we wanna be respectful of um, whatever, whatever um, you feel most comfortable with. Um, some statistics for session one. We had 46 attendees, 46 from 14 different institutions, including colleagues from the US, Canada and the UK. That's really amazing. Um, the, the, the number 14, we might be a little off because I ended up being a little confused about all of the attend various attendees from Minnesota. Um, I, I don't know if you all work for a cooperative institution or if you all fall under one hat or not. So from the pre-meeting intros, I ended up being, I, I, I was confused, but um, we'll save that. We'll, we'll say that for another time. Um, the session one recording is now available um, and you can see the Spotlight on Spotlight YouTube playlist. Thank you to Harvard for the recording and for the corrected captions. And um, we've posted that to the Stanford, um, our, our sta one of our Stanford YouTube accounts. Um, for anybody who didn't see that announcement, that the recording was available a few days ago, please join the Code for Live Slack workspace and scroll, there's a link there um, in the agenda. You can see it says, see this info page and scroll down to the section on Slack. And once you're a member of Slack, you can join either the Spotlight Development and or the Spotlight Service channels. Um, that is a principal way that we're, we're um, communicating with one another, um, you know, for, for the, for the community. So that's really a helpful way for you all to stay plugged in. And I think that's, I think that's it for my intro. Vanessa, are you still setting things up or did you want to dive into um, facilitating a short Q and A on the roadmap or I can do it? You are muted if you I are. I am muted, okay. Um, yeah, I, I've created a breakout room for everyone that I see listed, for all the universities I see listed. And then I, I'm just... Um, so, so what I want to know is, I'm not ready to introduce... Yeah, we're not doing that yet, yes. We're yes, not yes, doing yes, that I'm yet. Ready. What I want to know is, would you like me to facilitate this discussion or would you like to do it? Yeah, no, I'm happy to. Um, I, uh, yeah, so we wanted to just take a few moments to ask, um, well, I'll, I'll share my screen. Oh, um, we wanted to just take a few moments to see who all had questions about the roadmap, see if you all had a chance to look at it ahead of time. Um, and were there any particular questions you had as you were looking over it? that we want to discuss together before we um, go into breakout rooms. 
Um, I'm going to share my screen so we can just look at it together for a moment. Um, yeah, one one thing to note we we see some some folks um, have added some new things since the last meeting, which is awesome. Um, we we can tell by like the date added column where um, I think if we scroll down, eventually I will see some some new dates here, which is really great. Um, we also wanted to point out we created a due to feedback we got from the last session, um, we changed what was previously called, I think, document, uh, doc and deploy to sustainability, because we thought that would be a better, um, more all encompassing term to include things just like, you know, technical debt, upgrading of, you know, um, dependencies and that sort of thing, as well as, documentation and deployment um, information. So that's the one note we had there. Um, was there anything else, Kathy, we wanted to mention before just seeing what folks had for questions? I don't think so. As Vanessa has hinted, we're gonna have a short breakout session and, and I'm gonna provide the instructions and context for that. But before we do that, we just wanted to provide a short amount of time to see if anyone had any any specific question. We're gonna have much more detailed discussions about the roadmap, but did anybody have any general questions? Um, if you raise your hand, we'll call on you and um, we're happy to we're happy to do that. Oh, and I suppose we should put a link to the roadmap in the chat. And everybody does have edit permissions to that. So. You know, if if there aren't questions, we can have um, it, it, we can have, you know, just a couple more minutes for like the breakout session, Vanessa, we can do. Yeah like 12 minutes instead of 10. And then, you know, how many, how many institutions, how many breakout rooms do you have? Can you tell me? I have 14, um, including one sort of catch-all one, but I'm not quite Ooh. sure. What if there's, if there's 14, then we better leave it at 10 minutes. Cause that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of folks. Um, so let me explain how um, let me explain how this is going to work. Um, what we're going to give you all ten minutes to do is to um, discuss amongst yourselves on a per institution basis, and we'll get to. I think we have a room where where we might have some people attending who are just one of. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But for those of you who have two or more, um, we're going to ask you to go to, um, when we're ready here, to go to the breakout room for your institution. And uh, what we're looking for is for you all to identify your top three priorities and to record those priorities in, um, in the notes section of the agenda for today. Um, so a couple of things about the priorities. First of all, remember that the priority should benefit the community because we're talking about community here. What And we understand that some of those things about what is in scope for Spotlight Core and what, and what is out of scope, we need to uh, have more discussion about that. But if something feels like a priority to you, but it's very institution specific, that's really not what we're talking about here. We're talking about priorities, um, uh, selected priorities from the roadmap, which would hopefully benefit the entire Spotlight community. And one of the helpful ways of thinking about this might be, um, it might be useful to um, organize your priorities according to theme as opposed to an individual roadmap entry. Um, I leave that up to you all, but for example, um, I will say at Stanford, I think that accessibility is a priority. Um, we really need an accessibility um, upgrade for the Spotlight application as a whole. And of course that 
would entail a, a whole a whole number of things. So to me, that feels like a theme. Um, so, um, and then we need you to please designate uh, one person as the spokesperson so that when we're done with the breakout rooms, we're gonna go around the room and ask each person to take about two minutes to just um, talk about their top three priorities that you all have, um, that you, you all are putting forth. The final disclaimer I'll say is that these priorities, please don't panic. These are not set in concrete. We're not, we're not asking you to commit yourself to something going forward, no matter what the community decides to do, that you are absolutely wedded to those top three priorities and no others. Maybe you end up going back to your institutions, you discuss them and you decide those three are not good. We want these other three. I think that's totally fine. This is just right now to get the discussion going. Does yeah. anybody have, have any questions? I see some questions in the chat, Kathy, about, um, yeah, how do we address uh, what notes are institution specific? Do you, that was do you... actually me, if I can expand on it. If we're, as an institution, going to be prioritizing our needs in the notes field, instead of having a whole bunch of one, two, threes and not knowing where they're coming from, how would you like us to, do you just want us to put Princeton um, colon priority one? Uh, I thought it was set up in the notes already. Did we not do that? Yeah. I... If, you, if you look on page, if, if you scroll down in the notes, you can see that the names of the institutions are there, Cornell, Princeton, et cetera, with priority one, priority two, and priority three. Okay, so not in the roadmap itself, but in the spotlight on spotlight session two notes. Got yes. it. Yes, yes, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. um, um, Justin, I, Justin, I understand. Sometimes we don't know that we have a shared need. Um, what we're doing right now is in essence, <laughs> I mean, this is this is a way to pull the community, um, but we we, ha we had to have a mechanism for trying to at least elicit on an institutional basis and then have us come together. I think we're gonna keep iterating on this, right? Um, this is just like our very first slice or first pass I see this as sort of like a funnel, right? If you can imagine a funnel in your head and we're at the top of the funnel right now, just trying to, and we're gonna keep trying to winnow things down. Uh, the notes link in the chat again. Yes, thank you, Kim, very much. All right, are folks feeling so, ready? I think what, what we're gonna do in order to keep this moving along, um, please raise your hand if you have some other burning question about how the breakouts are supposed to work. Um, the other thing is, is that um, we need you to join the breakout room for your specific institution. We'll let you do that in just a second and we'll talk about um, any outliers. Um, if you have a question for one of us, will be able to come into your breakout room. Um, yes, Trey. Uh, if we have a priority that hasn't made it onto that roadmap document, do you want us to put it in the notes or do you want us? Yeah, want us go, to go ahead and put it in the notes, please. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and feel free to add it to the roadmap too. There's no, no deadline. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and you and remember, remember to pick a spokesperson. Um, and I think that's we're going to let you all go. Um, for those of you that have um, have two or more, please go ahead and go to your breakout rooms now. And we'll we'll start the timer in about another minute because we we have to sort out what to do with um, the singletons. Um, so you all yeah. can go ahead and go to your go to your breakout rooms now, join them and um, let's see. Yeah, I just want to say so before I open the rooms there, you should have um, a little icon at the bottom 
for ask for help um if you if you get stuck and that should like ping Kathy and I to like join your room um so please do that um if you get if you get stuck for any reason um and hopefully you can also message us too I'm, I'm a little unclear about that but um yeah and so I've created rooms for everybody um every institution I saw listed in the attendees list and I also created there was like a 14th generic group that um if your institution is not listed or your um for whatever reason join that group um but I hope I got everyone on the list so I'm going to go ahead and open all rooms um and have you all join the appropriate one for you But I can I actually do see the option to add a room. So do let me know if you if some a room is missing too. And I'll hang out here until everyone. Um, Vanessa, do you have the ability to um ping the, all the breakout rooms when they're closing to get yeah, I can I can broadcast minute. a message, yeah, like maybe a minute before. Um yes, that would be good to give people a one minute warning. Great, great. Um for the, I see a number of people here who haven't joined a breakout room. So let me know, uh, let us know if you're having having a problem. Kathy, I'm just wondering, should I join Stanford? Yes. I'll resume note-taking duties when we come back, I suppose. Yes, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, yes. And I'm going to pause the re recording too. Right ah. Oh, I see, Nick, you have... Okay, they oh shoot, they close in fifty four. They close in a minute now. So uh, uh, okay. Well, hopefully people will come back soon. Hello. Hi, Maura. Hello. Hi. We're we're just um, we didn't realize when the breakout rooms are closed that it gives people an extra sixty seconds. So we're just going to be waiting for folks to come back. And then Vanessa, do you, I, I don't have a way of seeing when the breakout rooms are actually closed. Are you able to see that? Yep. We get one second. They should okay. all be closed now. Okie dokie. So um, thank you everybody for your patience with us and with this process. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Um, in the interest of time and because we have so many attendees from so many different institutions, which is awesome. And we want to give, give um, this large group a little time to, um, everybody needs to share and we need to have a little time for discussion. Um, each spokesperson is going to have one minute and it's going to be just like you see at DLF or um, other place that, um, or other conference where we set a timer. So when the timer rings, you are done. <laughs> um, sorry for having to do that, but otherwise we won't get through everybody. So, um, and I wonder if if we can ask that people go in the order in which um, you see yourselves in the notes document. So that would be Cornell first, followed by Princeton and so on. So, um or should I kick us off Harvard Harvard's first yeah <laughs> oh sorry I'm sorry Harvard sorry Harvard okay I am going to be the timekeeper so um your time starts now okay we have done a lot of work on design um and accessibility we're wondering what we've done can be contributed back to the core to both um enhance uh, accessibility, but also give out of the box design a refresh. We're also really interested in sustainability, updating dependencies like Blacklight 8, security uh, fixes, and bug triage. And then third, documentation, um, creating a shared community space, 
to both help new folks and um, seasoned folks with their spotlight instance. And I'll pass it to Cornell. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm Phil from Cornell, um, and we reviewed the, the list, um, especially Jesse, Christina, and Sarah, who are here. And um, our priorities are, are pretty similar to Harvard's. Um, priority one is definitely accessibility. And we have a vision of having the core product being more accessible right out of the box. So no one has to customize anything to to achieve a high level of access, web accessibility. Um, admin functions, uh, that's a big, broad category. But there are several that we would really like to see, like uh, supporting more file types for exhibits is really important. Be able to upload multiple files per item, um, which we added to the list. Not sure if others need that, um, but we would really like it. Um, the ability to delete a file is important. And then finally, uh, we thought, you know, documentation and a sustained commitment to good documentation um, would be great for sustainability. And next over to Princeton. Great, thanks. Here at Princeton, there are three things we talked about. First one was ease of maintenance and upgrades. Our biggest struggle with Spotlight is just, it's really hard to keep it up to date. Uh, for the sake of the community, it sort of feels like Everybody has their own spotlight as a result of this engine-based infrastructure. And what would the world look like if there was one spotlight that we're all developing on? Uh, priority two is full text search of exhibit and page text. We think the work that our um, curators are doing to make these amazing exhibits should be searchable and discoverable the same as the content that's a part of those exhibits. Uh, and priority three is accessibility. We think there's some real work that needs to go into there. Uh, next up to Durham. Hello. Um, we'd like uh, basic instructions for installing Spotlight that actually get you a fully working product. Um, we've tried Spotlight a few times a few years ago, and it was easier and worked better, but there seem to be some things which don't quite work now uh, if you start from scratch. Um, and the demo site to see what it's meant to be like when you've got it working, so you can check whether it has. Uh, and a guide on adding metadata fields, should they be global or local, or how do you do it? And our second priority is a guide to writing and importing gem and a simple working example. We really like the look of the OAI PMH one that Harvard's done, uh, but again, we couldn't get that working out of the box. There's probably some other bits. And our third priority is the one about browsing exhibit items geographically. And um, we, we like the look of uh, geo blacklight and having that kind of stuff combined in with Spotlight somehow would be really excellent. And over to Stanford. Hello, we talked a lot about accessibility, especially features for editing alt text. And then this is not a development concern, but how do we go and backfill all the alt text that's missing? Um, lots of concerns about maintenance and keeping things up to date, especially Rails, Bootstrap, Blacklight, and concerns that Sir Trevor, which is like the editing widget, isn't maintained. And uh, priority three is around documentation. You know, it's it's been it, uh, sometimes difficult for us to troubleshoot things to figure out how all the components fit together. And it'd be good to have documentation about that. And I will pass it to National Library of Medicine. Oh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Christy Moffat. Um, and uh, so yeah, Jennifer Gilbert, my colleague and I talked about our top priorities though, um, you know, we'd still like to get a little bit more input from our um, the rest of our product team, but um, pretty high on our list are upgrading Spotlight to uh, Blacklight 8. Um, we would like to the ability to delete items um, as well, and also the ability to search all items in the exhibits um, and across the the whole site. So those, yeah, those it's similar to others. Um, yeah, high priorities. Thank you. It's Digital Library of Georgia. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sheila McAllister. I'm the only one from the Digital Library of Georgia here. So these are my opinions only. Um, we really want to um, focus on accessibility, um, sustainability, you know, the, making sure that that um, it's easy to upgrade to new ver newer versions of Blacklight and the, and the like. Um, and like others, we are really interested in having more exhibit file types um, and we and deleting, oh my God, deleting would be amazing. Deleting that actually works.
Minnesota Digital Library. I think you're up. Yes. Yep, yeah, I'm up. Uh, my name is Stephanie Hess, and I'm with the Minnesota Digital Library, which I should note is separate from the University of Minnesota Libraries. They're not the same thing. I know you mentioned that was confusing earlier. Um, we are using Spotlight to add more interpretive layers to our digital collections from organizations across the state of Minnesota. Um, so we kind of use Spotlight a little differently than some that I've noticed. Um, but I did like someone's point that it seems like everyone has their own Spotlight and we all kind of develop it and do things differently with it. It'd be nice to share things more easily. So again, one thing that's a priority for us is um, accessibility, making sure that everything is actually usable um, for everybody, which is a common theme. Um, I'd also really be interested in knowing if we can analyze how these exhibits are being um, used by people. Are people just jumping on a page and leaving, or are they clicking through all of the widgets, those sorts of things. I don't even know if that's possible. Um, and then I also um, would be curious to know if there is any um, easily implemented customization tools. It sounds like some of you have done those um, on your own instances, but it would be nice to know what um, maybe we could do in Minnesota as well. Thank you. Hi, Abby from UCSD here. Um, our product owner was not able to attend, so we'll work with them over the next few days and add our priorities over to Santa Barbara. Hello. Santa Barbara. My name's Oh, sorry. I had to find that mute button, which is elusive when you need it most. Uh, so my name is Elisa Pierce. I'm working as the front end developer and user experience designer over at Santa Barbara um, Library. And we are using Spotlight to um, highlight discovery of some exhibitions and collections put together by our librarians. Um, I'm loving what I'm hearing from everybody. Accessibility is one of the things at the top of our list. Um, there's uh, been talk about user management as well and the ability to um, basically turn on and off somebody's permissions very easily. Um, currently, we had a situation where somebody left and having to take them off individually of every collection that we had um, in our Spotlight rent edition, um, which is 30 plus. So that took a minute. Um, I think there's more, but I'm going to go ahead and consult our team to see if there's others. But I really like what I'm hearing about um, sort of the deployment and having a more a more healthy deployment out the gate uh, so that it works as well as documentation. I can go next. Um, hi, I'm Nick Homend. I'm head of digital initiatives at Tufts University. There are a bunch of other stakeholders and people who contribute to the management of our spotlight service who aren't on this call and I'll talk with them after this. Um, but yeah, I get the sense that accessibility um, improvements to spotlight would help us uh, in complying with the things our institution expects for uh, applications hosted on our domain. Um, since I've been a member of Spotlight, I've heard people talk about deleting items and exhibits more easily. And so I think it'd be cool to see that happen. Um, and then, yeah, I, I personally would love to see other IIIF viewers more readily available. Um, I've seen a couple of things in the roadmap about Universal Viewer or Mirador, and um, people have asked about that here. University um, so, of Oregon, yeah. Yes. So I'm um, the only one from the University of Oregon here today. I'm, my name is Megan Walter, and uh, I will definitely come back to this after consulting the other um, more experienced people with Spotlight. Um, but from my limited perspective, accessibility is definitely the biggest thing. I know that another um, thing that we as an institution were having some trouble with is uh, IIIF bulk upload because the platform that we are um, importing from does not have IIIF links for collections. And so that has been a sticking point for us. But um, I will definitely consult with the other members of the team to get some uh, more perspectives on that and come back to it. Last but not least, UC Berkeley. Thank you. Yep, so um, I'm 
David Zuckerman. I'm with the, the a programmer with the UC Berkeley Library. And we've been using Spotlight from very early on and kind of upgrading. So we have a lot of exhibits and we let the various libraries and, and units within the libraries create their own exhibits. And our main concerns, like everybody else's, is accessibility, um, primarily alt text, and um, the need for it to be kind of ADA compliant. Um, deleting items and exhibits is another thing. A lot of people have that as well. And issues I've run into is um, sometimes we'll have like orphaned items. I'll, I'll, I'll have to troubleshoot somebody's collection and um, they're not able to add items or something. And then I have to, um, I find out the issue is that there's maybe some orphaned item and I have to actually physically go in the database to, to, to find that uh, orphan item and, and clean it up. And it would be nice for ways to be able to identify that type of situation and uh, clean it up through some kind of API or, or, or um, some backend component or, or in the UI. Um, Cause that's actually taken a while to, to figure out sometimes. Super, thank you so much, everybody. Wow, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm bowled over by um, all the thought that you, you all clearly have already put into this, right? And I'm seeing so many commonalities. Um, we have about, uh, we have about nine minutes now um, before we do um, some important administrative wrap up at the end. Please don't leave leave before we do that wrap up because we have to talk about um, whether or not we're going to need to change the date for uh, for session three of this summit, the last session. So, but before we get there, um, we have uh, we have several minutes to have some group discussion. So um, this is this is wide open. Just please raise your hand with any further thoughts or questions or reflections on the process so far, um, where, where you would like to see this go. We're gonna have um, a great session next time for that, where we can really dive deep on, on the priorities that you all have identified. So who, who has questions, suggestions, and reflections at this, at this juncture? I agree. There's a lot of commonality among many of the institutions. Um, and then, yeah, look, refining what those are accessibility. It sounds like the deletion, the proper deletion idea was, was a hit, um, that, that many would like. So maybe those could be prioritized. Yeah. You know, the deletion one is really interesting. Um, I've always been told that it isn't really feasible. And the reason why is when you're running, a, and I'd love to have this explored further by developers who know far better than I do, um, that when you're running a single instance of Spotlight, as most of us are, that are hosting multiple exhibits, um, and we are at 148 published exhibits right now, by the way, we're almost at the 150 milestone, which is really exciting. Um, there are a number of items that are in multiple exhibits. As a matter of fact, we have examples where we have content from university archives that are in 26 different exhibits. So if you want to delete an item from one exhibit rather than just designate it as private, which is the mechanism we use, um, then that exhibit creator has to consider the 25 other exhibit creators um, and figure out how to do that. So, um, Maura, do you do you have a brilliant solution in my uh, I don't have a brilliant solution to the fact that people would be but we do have a delete rake task that we use here. Um and like it's just a rake task, it could go into core. It does use I don't remember the term for what you call it in Spotlight, like the it's kind of it's one of the IDs. So you would still have to get a list of IDs. Um and it's so for the case you just said, you would have to have its ID from all 25 of those, but it's just what you pass in the text file of the IDs. That's that's all we've got. Cause, cause like you said, it, they're different IDs, um, yeah. but it for the way we manage, it works for us. Um, but yeah. yeah um, that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't work for Stanford. Uh, Matthew, do you have, uh, do you also have a brilliant uh, solution? 
Um, well, uh, when we were last working on Spotlight uh, properly about um, four years ago, uh, three years ago, our developer did manage to write a thing to do uh, deletion of items. Um, uh, of course, I don't know whether it's compatible with the latest Spotlight now, uh, but it's certainly not impossible. I mean, it's far easier for a computer to work out whether the thing is used in other exhibits than it is for a human. Um, so I, it must be possible to do. I was going to, uh, just on a different topic, really, I was going to say I liked the idea that someone said of, of um, seeing what more can be added to Spotlight as though it was a product rather than an engine, because I think that would make things much easier for people who are getting started, because we look at all, all of your Spotlight sites and we think, oh, that's great, that's brilliant, or oh, it does that as well. And then you find out that actually the core of it doesn't necessarily do that, and you've then got to work out how to how to add it. And uh, certainly in the UK context, there's not an awful lot of Ruby developers around, and we don't seem to offer enough pay uh, in universities to attract people um, because the uh, the British government website mops up all of the Ruby developers in the UK, it appears. Wow, that's, yeah, thanks for um, educating us about that. I had I had no idea, and that's, that's really unfortunate. Um, Jesse. Hi, I had just a process question about how we kind of envision this going forward. If we have these three priorities and we align somehow, are, are you envisioning like three different working groups centered around these areas or or was there another way of moving forward? Um, that's a great question. Um, we haven't gotten there yet because we didn't know what was going to bubble up from this session. It, again, think of it as the funnel, you know, when we're at the top of the funnel. So what Vanessa and I have been doing to um, try and um, try and facilitate these sessions so that it's not just, you know, chaos and everybody running around, <laughs> running around in the room is that um, not only did we meet for about four months beforehand um, regularly to plan these, but we're, we have substantive meetings after each ses session to reflect and say, okay, this is what happened. How can we best facilitate for the next session? Or how can we best facilitate going forward? So fair question, no answer yet. One of the things that I will be doing though is pulling all of your priorities into a little visualization, right? So that we can all, um, we can certainly we heard the accessibility and deletion of items. Um, I'll be shocked if those don't come up as the top two across the board. Um, but it it would I want to I want to have a visual of those. Um, you know that we could that we could all all see. And if and if you if any of you have um, specific ideas like you sort of mentioned, well, Jesse, like are we going to have a working group on on each one or something? Um, you know outside of this meeting, please pop your suggestions in the Code for Live Slack. The other thing that we, I mean, we could create a third channel. I sort of hate doing that. I think it probably, the suggestions probably best belong in the Spotlight Development channel. Um, and and I would encourage, encourage us to leverage that communication to um, share ideas. Vanessa and I will keep our eyes on that, by the way, so that if, if you all have um, suggestions or requests, that we can incorporate for session three or beyond, we're happy to do so. Trey. Uh, hey, I don't have a suggestion for process. Yes, uh, please. Good luck, they're very, I said I don't, they're very oh. hard. You got it, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. uh, my, I just wanna sort of mm, say that I recognize that this thought process about like the product versus the engine is like such a such a dramatic differentiator in that situation but I also want to say that like right now when I look at these priorities and I look at features and upgrades and sustainability and and things like that what what comes to mind is that every step for all of us is two steps right which is, I think, why so many of us vary and why Spotlight gets harder to deploy without people knowing, right? Is that we all have to be like, okay, we'll fix it in core and now I have to upgrade my own application. Or what's more likely is we fix our own application, yes. right? And then maybe it'll hit core someday. Um, 
So combining those might, might break down that bottleneck in some way. Uh, this is about um, community. This is about open source community and, and, and um, working in and managing open source communities is really, really, really hard. Totally. Um, yeah. So um, thank you for, thank you for your comments and, you know, building off of what Matthew said, because I think it's really important. We are going to take one last question from Sean, because then we need to uh, figure out some logistics for session three. Sean, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to follow up with that, you know, on that with um, just some thoughts about accessibility uh, prioritization. And I think if the community, um, you know, it, it could come together around at least have a policy or some kind of target, like WCAG level target um, that we're aiming for, it would help prioritize those issues and make sure that the most important ones get addressed first. So I think that would be a, a good exercise. Um, I like that about having a WCAG target. That really makes a lot of sense. Um, and I would I would hope that that's the direction we would we would go to on the accessibility uh, thread um, and Thank moving you. that forward. Thank you, everybody, very much. We're going to have a lot more open discussion time next next uh, next time. So the question that we have about um, the next session, Vanessa, while I'm talking, would you mind looking up the date for me because I don't have it right in front of me. Um, one of the things that came up for one person I know was that they can't come next time. And we don't know, Vanessa and I were not certain if that had to do with um, some sort of like widespread winter spring break on the East Coast for East Coast public schools, maybe we're not really sure. And so um, I wonder if we could get a show of hands. Um, to see, or maybe you could just put in the chat uh, would probably be better. Can you put in the chat if you are unable to attend on February 22nd at this same time? I see two so far. That seems, and is it, um, can I ask for those three people who, um, who included that and I can reach out to you individually, but, but we also need to kind of figure out some kind of group consensus. Is it the entire week or is it the day? Mm -hmm. Because if we if we look for another time, so that Matthew says just the day, Phil and Trey is is that the whole week or is it just the day, that week? Okay, and then Trey, what about you? Okay, hmm, I am. It sounds like it. Uh, I can come, don't reschedule for Trey. Um, Bill says it's that week. What, uh, you know, it looks as if we might be able to move it uh, to the 23rd, which is Friday. That's what I'm getting out of this. Does, does, um, would Friday the 23rd um, of February at this same time, I, I hope maybe that's going to work. I don't know how long people need to check their calendars and and um, these kinds of logistics are always really uh, are always really challenging. It looks like maybe we could do it on the twenty third at the same at the same time. Please pop. Yeah, uh, you can't do one to two p.m. Okay, we could shove it an hour earlier. We could we could do. Um, You know what, what I will do is I'll have some discussion in the Spotlight uh, um, developer and Spotlight service uh, channels. I'll pop messages in there and um, 
Oh, yeah. And I'm seeing that the 22nd doesn't work for, for Princeton. Yeah, doodle poll for this many people. Um, <laughs> I think we might end up back back on the 22nd if we did that. Um, gosh, holy, holy smokes. Cause I'm seeing that we would just need to reschedule for two people. Um, I, the following week too, Kathy, if we wanna go yeah. there. Yep, I'll try a doodle poll or put put something in Slack. So please stay tuned. Um, I won't I won't bore us with any more scheduling discussion. Thank you all so much. Vanessa and I are here for another thirty minutes um, for uh, discussion, and we look forward to session three, where we can dive deeper and hopefully come up with some actionable things that we can agree upon um, to take this community forward. Thank you so much for your time. I think so. I'm going to stop the recording.